All right, children, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be learning about the supply curve. Just like the demand curve that I taught you in the last video, the supply curve is gonna go actually on the same graph. So our x-axis is still gonna be quantity, our y-axis is still gonna be price, except now our supply curve will be upward sloping. There is a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. As price increases, quantity supplied increases as well. And that's because suppliers are gonna be your producers the people and businesses that make products or provide some sort of service. As price level goes up, there is an opportunity for profit. So there's a profit incentive here that causes people and businesses to want to produce more or offer up more product when price is higher and there's a chance for them to make more money. Just like with demand, I'm still going to use cookies because everybody loves cookies. Why not? So for the suppliers or the producers of cookies, the makers of cookies, if cookies are gonna cost 50 cents, then suppliers of cookies are gonna be willing to offer up about 100 cookies, I would say. As the price decreases, if the price of cookies were to decrease, there would be a movement along the supply curve and the quantity supplied would decrease. So if cookies got down to like 25 cents, I think producers would be willing to make about 50 cookies. There's not as much profit incentive there, so it isn't as lucrative for them to make cookies at the moment. However, if the price rises, maybe people are buying more cookies and the price is going up. As the price rises to 75 cents, the quantity supplied for cookies is going to increase to like 150. Now producers of cookies are going to be willing to make more because there's a chance to get more of a profit now that the price is higher. A change in the price is going to cause a movement along the supply curve. It's going to cause a change in the quantity supply. Now we're going to talk about things outside of price that cause a change in the supply of something. Just like with demand, something other than price that causes the supply of a product to change is going to cause a shift of the curve. So an increase of supply is going to be a shift to the right. Remember, in this class, every time something shifts to the right, that's an increase. Every time something shifts to the left, that's a decrease. Something you might notice right now, a shift to the right causes the supply to increase even though the supply curve is now lower than the old one. You need to keep this in mind. Uh, a shift to the left would cause the supply to decrease. Something you need to make sure that you're not saying is supply going up or down. You should not be saying go up or down because it's going to confuse you. If you're, if you're saying the supply is going up or down, you might end up shifting the curve in the wrong direction. Imagine if something caused the supply of cookies to increase, and I said that the supply of cookies goes up. I might end up accidentally drawing my new supply curve to the left because that's literally up higher than the old supply curve. However, this would not be showing an increase in supply, it would be showing a decrease in supply. So you need to keep that in mind. Never say that it goes up or down in here. It doesn't go down in here. It's not the DMs. The first thing that's something other than price that could cause a change in the supply of something is input prices. Input prices are the things that businesses have to pay for in order to produce. So it could be like the raw materials that go into making cookies, or it could be the energy that it takes. So maybe paying for electricity or paying for gasoline and stuff like that. Or it could be the wages to pay the laborers to actually produce the product. Those are all input prices. If input prices decrease, well, then it's going to get easier to make stuff. The supply of cookies shifts to the right. If input prices increase, it becomes harder to produce things. And the supply of whatever it is will shift to the left. So for cookies, let's say that the price of flour has decreased. It's now cheaper to buy flour. Now that it costs less to purchase flour, I can make more cookies for the same amount of money because it costs me less to get the, the inputs to actually produce the cookies. So if the price of flour decreases, the supply of cookies will shift to the right. And now at every price, there's gonna be more cookies available because I'll be able to produce more and offer up more cookies for sale at every price because it's easier for me to make them. Another input that could change could be wages. If wages increase for cookie producers, like maybe they, they, um, they unionized and fought for higher wages. 
Now that wages have gone up, I, the cookie manufacturer, have to pay people more money to work, and so I might not have as much money sitting around to buy the other inputs that I need, like milk and flour, or maybe I just can't hire as many people and still make the same profit that I wanted to before. So if wages increase, then the supply of cookies would shift to the left. And now at every price, I'm now offering fewer cookies because it costs me more to produce them. Another thing that can cause a shift of the supply curve would be the change of related goods and services. Let's take chocolate bars for instance. If chocolate bars become more expensive, then I would expect people to start buying more cookies. If I think people are going to start buying more cookies, I'm going to try to increase my supply to meet that demand so that I can rake in the money while people are buying my product. The supply will increase and shift to the right, and that will cause an increase in the supply of cookies at every price. There will be more cookies available. No matter what the price is, now there's more. Remember before at 50 cents we were, we were offering up like 100 cookies. Now at 50 cents we might be offering up 200 cookies because we know that people are in the market for cookies. Something else that can cause a change in the supply of something that's outside of price could be a change in technology. For cookies, if there is now some new mixing bowl that makes it easier to mix a whole bunch of cookie go, uh, dough at once, then that will increase the supply of cookies because it'll be easier to make cookies because of this increase in technology. Now again, at every price, there's gonna be more cookies available to be purchased because they're easier to make because of this increase in technology. A change in expectations could also change the supply of a product. Again, this is something outside of price that would cause the supply to either increase or decrease. A change in expectation could be like January rolling around for cookie producers. When January rolls around, we know that people are going to be doing their New Year's resolutions. And a lot of those resolutions include going on a diet. So if I know that people are not going to be buying cookies at, for the next month or so, and I am a cookie producer, I might decrease my supply of cookies and save, I might stop making them for a little bit and save all of my, my materials and my production for later on, maybe in February or March when people are kind of over it and they give up their New Year's resolution. So the supply of the cookies would shift to the left. And now at every price, there's fewer cookies available because I'm saving my cookie dough and production and stuff like that until the future when I know that people are actually going to be looking to be purchasing cookies. Right now they're not, so I'm not making it. A change in the number of producers can also change the supply of a product. If there's more producers, more manufacturers, or more businesses that are providing a product, then the supply would increase. If there's fewer, then the supply would decrease. So let's say that a new company moves into the area that decides that they're also going to be making cookies. If there's more companies producing cookies, then the supply of cookies will increase and shift to the right. Now that the supply has increased and shifted to the right, at every price there's more cookies available because there's more manufacturers. There's a whole new producer in the market that's making cookies as well. The opposite could be true as well. You could have a shift to the left of the supply of cookies. If one of the cookie producing companies were to go out of business or maybe there's like a fire at a factory or something like that, which would make it where there's fewer cookies available. A final thing that could change the supply of a product would be government action. A subsidy is when the government pays a producer to make a product. In the US, we subsidize corn production. I don't know why we would, but let's pretend that the government subsidized cookie production. They want more cookies on the market. So they're going to pay producers to make cookies. That's going to increase the supply of cookies. So a subsidy will cause an increase in the supply of the product, which will make it cheaper for consumers, people that want to buy it. So at every price now, there's more cookies available and everybody's gonna be able to get their hands on some. So this has been the supply curve video, the things outside of price that cause supply to increase and shift to the right or decrease and shift to the left. Remember, don't say up or down. On my next video, we're gonna put supply and demand together and start seeing how the prices are set and what causes changes in prices. Goodbye, children.